Hello guys and also hello to uh, a lot of new subscribers that I've had over the last couple of weeks. I guess about uh, 10,000 people signed up for this channel in a little more than a week. And I think a lot of you have seen like the most recent uh, Reparathon kind of videos and I just... Uh, the first thing that I want to let you know is that I'll keep that kind of content coming. I'm actually working on uh, three more episodes of that style. Um, I've been uh, really uh, looting the scrapyards, uh, found a lot of cool tools, but also like salvaged parts and I'm working on upgrading things like um, I'm working on restoring saws, uh, even like jackhammers. Then I found lots of cool parts that I uh, salvaged from um, old equipment at the scrapyard and I'm also working on uh, upgrade projects like uh, silent compressors and stuff like that and uh, yeah just want to let you know that these kind of uh, videos will keep coming it just uh, takes its time because uh, there has been something of a summer break for me and just about a week ago I had like a clean start with the new videos and it takes sometimes a couple of weeks until the replacement parts come in so that's why there's quite a uh, quite a delay um, but I haven't been uh, lazy at all actually over the past six weeks. Uh, I've worked on a bunch of uh, projects that have been very interesting. I actually spent about uh, three weeks in a nearby forest where I worked on uh, the preparations, the decoration uh, for a music festival, the Zugvögel festival and that means migratory birds. Well, that's what uh, people are like there. They migrate between um, uh, like the forests of the Eifel in uh, West Germany. And in the winter for the past couple of years, they also made a music festival on uh, Tenerife. And that's why they are like migratory birds. When it's winter here, they are actually on the island uh, doing the festival. Uh, this won't happen this year. So this is the only Zugvögel festival for this year. And I've been there for most of like the well, preparation work, the construction work taking place in the forest and also some of like the um, disassembly process as well. Uh, my job was to, well, kind of give some input for some decoration ideas and I also built um, a video art installation from old televisions and well, let me just show you a little bit of what happened here. When we first arrived here, this was really nothing but um, an empty spot of forest. We have kind of rented this place for a couple of weeks and then we started to build different uh, dance floors and stages for live music. And some of the projects involved a tree house and a dance floor that was basically made from hay. And uh, we tried to make the dance for kind of post-apocalyptic, so we went to the scrapyard and bought a lot of rusty metal sheets and other like old rusty parts and tried to decorate the walls. And um, here we can have a little walk around of what it actually looked like after it was uh, kind of finished. We are in the dance floor now and we're passing the spot where my video installation could be seen. And well, I might show you in a little more detail in another video how I actually built this. Uh, it worked like that. You could play, uh, in this case, Star Wars uh, Rogue Squadron on these seven black and white uh, displays and people loved it. The only problem was that it started raining and I had to cover it up uh, for some of the festival. And then we have this uh, tree house here that we built in one of the trees where we sold stuff like drinks and food and people could walk around here between the stages and um, the dance floors. And some other gadgets like this suspension bridge here and just other fun projects that um, came to be while we were working with a group of about uh, 20 to 30 people. Uh, on this part of the festival there also have been other dance floors and other structures that have been built within two or three weeks and uh, well it was a new experience for me because I had built like props and stuff for films before but never for a music festival so this was a first for me 
but it was a great feeling to see how people accepted and really celebrated what we had built and uh, yeah I think I'm going to do this uh, again next year when there will be another Zugvögel festival and probably uh, one up this one more time and build some more cool electronic stuff in advance that will be on display here. Well, after the whole music festival thing was done, uh, I had about a week to do my taxes. That's not very interesting. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, but then I decided to go on a sailing uh, turn, a sailing trip. Uh, a friend of mine had asked me for like half a year if I would be interested in sailing and I always said that I had too much work on my hands. Uh, but then I, well, it's the summer and I could come for free because he was like kind of looking forward to having my technical expertise on board and uh, he was hoping that I would like maybe sail together with him uh, in the future which might still happen um, but well we had an accident at sea and a rather serious one at that uh, so let me tell you what happened uh, the ship had been on its way from the Shetland Islands in the north of Scotland to Amsterdam for five weeks and the whole trip would take six weeks. I decided to join the crew for the last of the six, five or six weeks. So I was only supposed to be a part of this for a, well, for the final level, so to speak. Uh, I drove to the town of uh, Brunsbüttel in northern Germany where I came aboard and then we sailed uh, to the north uh, to the North Sea via the Elbe River and after 15 hours of sailing we reached the island of Norderney where we basically took a break for one day because uh, at uh, well a at very high wind speeds we would not dare to go back onto the sea for a day and uh, we well we then expected the wind to calm down a little bit and uh, set sails one day after that for the Dutch island of uh, Terschelling and we were expecting to have a 24 hour trip 24 hours of sailing but after just two or three hours sailing on the open sea north of Norderney we had like a major incident while sailing at well moderate winds I'd say that we were about 20 to 22 knots maybe uh, of wind well in the peaks the backstay, which is like a um, pretty strong steel cable that holds the main mast from the backside, it came loose. And uh, that resulted in the main ma mast breaking off the deck. Uh, this is the, the foot or the footing of the mast, and that is made from massive aluminium cast parts, and they had just broken off. Here you can see a kind of a plastic nut, an insulator piece that the backstay was screwed into and this was done apparently 30 years ago when the ship was built to insulate this cable from the ship so that the cable could act as an antenna as well. So they insulated that on the top and on the bottom kind of compromising the strength of this normally very strong steel cable. So when the backstay had snapped and the foot of the mast broke loose, um, other cables also snapped and the mast, which is by the way about 15 meters tall, uh, started to shake loose, um, was slashing back and forth and left and right quite violently and uh, with, the, with the sail also um, making violent movements from left to right and really ripping on the mast and we were in danger of losing it altogether you know it could have broken off completely and well it could have tossed someone overboard or it could have destroyed the ship so like a 20 to 30 minute uh, battle in my as far as I remember 
in my memory, uh, started where we tried to get the situation under control, which meant to take down the sail and somehow fasten the mast before we could think about actually sailing to a safe harbor. And it was only uh, due to the skipper and the co-skipper who are very experienced sailors uh, that we could get the situation under control. After that we had an emergency call uh, to the island of Norderney and we then decided to sail to the harbor on the island of Lange Oak where after two or three hours of sailing uh, we finally reached. We almost had the problem that the harbor was actually too shallow for our ship so for a moment we thought that we couldn't even go on land there. And uh, yeah, uh, they say that sailing is 95% of nothing and 5% of absolute terror and we had both of that. Uh, these two and a half hours were really a uh, crazy experience because there was, a, there was a good chance that we could have been hurt seriously or people could have died if you uh, would have been thrown uh, into the sea. Under the situations you have to imagine that the ship was really um, shaking rather violently in the wind and making terrible noises and for someone like me who was still kind of a greenhorn I really could not tell how big the danger was and uh, well at the end of the day it was a weird experience and I felt like uh, this could have been it so it was kind of hard after we returned to the mainland to uh, uh, go back to business as usual I had to think a little bit about my life and how things will go on but well long story short if you have a ship like this and you can say that the backstay or any other of the cables are uh, like connected to these old plastic parts replace them because um, the damage on the ship is now like I think in the tens of uh, thousands of euros and lives could have been uh, hurt people could have been hurt And yeah, I just uh, wanted to let you know that I'm still alive and that I'm back here working on the kind of content that you know and love. And uh, I hope you appreciate this little update and uh, I hope to see you soon.